with you guys. Welcome back to another episode of the Bleeding BNG podcast. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you're checking in on YouTube, be sure to like, subscribe, and a comment. Thank you guys for all the interactions that you shared so far. If you're checking this out on podcast platforms, be sure to leave a rating, be sure to leave a review because we have another fire episode for you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a timestamp as I do for every episode. Today is Wednesday, March 30th. It's about 7.30 p.m. And I just felt the need to get this episode out. I've been meaning to get this episode out for a couple of days, but you guys have me pretty fired up in the Washington football team community, the Washington commander community. I'm going to get used to saying this name. And it's not even that I don't like the name. But, you know, Washington football team is just starting to roll off the tongue. But the Washington commander community, I'm not going to lie. Not going to lie. You guys had me a little fired up. And the reason that you guys had me so fired up is because you guys are so quick to attack on Twitter. Like, you guys are so quick to attack on Twitter. And I know it comes with the fame, the little bit of fame we've gotten from this podcast. Trust me, I'm trolling. Um, But I made a tweet last week. Talking about um, a segment that Kevin Sheehan did. Um, If you guys aren't familiar with Kevin Sheehan, he's the morning radio host on the Team 980. Um, He does the 6 uh, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. window every morning, Monday through Friday. I mean, he does really good stuff. Um, He's a guy that I've been listening to for a while. Um, But last week, he actually had a topic talking about, you know, trading Terry McLaurin. And while I was listening to that To the segment, you know, I just tweeted that, you know, Kevin Sheehan was doing a segment on trading to Terry McLaurin. And I said that there's too much smoke around this topic to ignore at this point. And I got berated. I got berated. Um, And I think a lot of people didn't actually read the tweet and they thought that that was an original thought coming from me because, you know, so many people quick to jump in my mentions and ready to debate. I'm not on Twitter for that, guys. I'm not. Um, And I know that, you know, it may seem like it because I'll always hit you with a rebuttal. But sometimes I'm just ready. I'm just really ready to talk about my team. And that's what I was doing last week. So I'll put the tweet in the video if you're checking this out on YouTube. But I will admit that the word smoke might have been a little heavy. The word smoke might have been a little heavy. But I will say that this storyline does have legs. We'll be naive to 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 think that this storyline doesn't have legs at all. And the storyline that I'm talking about is trading Terry McLaurin. So this is something that, you know, they were talking about on the morning radio show. And, you know, would we do it? Um, are we likely to do it? And, you know, how, what's his value if we were to do it? And, and my thing is, like I said, I think that the word smoke was a little too heavy. But you got to think, guys, like, there, there is some story, like, there's reasons that people are talking about this. You know, with the trade, the, the wild free agency market and the trade market going on with the wide receiver position. Why hasn't Terry McLaurin been extended yet? You know, there's guys talking like, you know, there's guys, I know Kyle Shanahan gave, you know, Debo Samuel a strong endorsement just yesterday at, you know, the league meeting, new, new league meetings, new league year meetings um, about signing Debo Samuel to, you know, a pretty lucrative deal. And I just haven't seen that yet with Terry McLaurin. And, you know, once one has no choice but to ponder, wow, with this organization. Like I said, we'll be naive to think that this organization, everything is just running smoothly and things like that. So I don't want to, I, I don't want this to be a long episode by any means, but we're going to touch bases on this topic and we're going to touch bases on why I believe that there is some, you know, some legs to the storyline, some traction. There is. And, you know, if you're checking this out on the YouTube, you can see, guys, I am a Terry McLaurin guy. If you're just listening up on this, on the podcast only platform, audio only, you guys, I have a, a Terry McLaurin jersey. I have a Terry McLaurin jersey, Washington football team jersey, because I am a Terry McLaurin guy. I have a guy who was on here with Travis Thomas in October and said that he was playing at the top five level during that time. He was. Terry McLaurin is an elite player. And if it was up to me... I'll give him I'll give him over twenty million dollars. I'll give him over twenty million dollars and we'll talk about this. But my I want to go back to the question that I asked. Like why hasn't he been extended yet? Or why why isn't the talks around the the team um, you know, the team, not the Washington Commander community, why are we talking about it? But why haven't I heard a, a glimmer of hope from a Martin Mayhew? Why haven't I heard a glimmer of hope from a Ron Rivera? Why haven't I heard a glimmer of hope from a Marty Herney or anybody from, you know, Ashburn? I haven't heard it. And if you guys have heard it, I listen to, to Washington Commander's content 24-7. So if you guys have heard it and I missed it, please direct me to it. But I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. And I want to talk about, you know, uh, a, a half-assed remark that Ron might have gave during a quick press conference answer. 
Because I, I, I think I know what you guys are talking about, but I don't, I, don't, I don't call that a vote of confidence by any means. And I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that from anybody in Ashburn. And I just I have, I have no choice but to ask why. Like I mentioned, Kyle Shanahan with Debo Samuel the other day. We haven't really heard it with D.K. Metcalf, but we heard it with A.J. Brown. The reason that we haven't really heard it in D.K. Metcalf is because he might be looking to get out of Seattle without Russ and that organization rebuilding. And they may also be looking at moving him. So the two guys that we haven't really heard it about is D.K. Metcalf and Terry McLaurin. Any news from the team, the official team in the organization, we haven't really heard any glimmer of hope or any vote of confidence regarding extensions for those two guys. Now, like I said, A.J. Brown, they were talking about that during the Titans playoff run. They were talking about how he was ready to be one of the most highest paid receivers in the NFL. Now, that, granted, that was prior to, you know, Tyreek Hill signing his new deal, Devontae Adams getting his new deal. But I'll touch on all that when I talk about the structure of Terry McLaurin and what I think he deserves. What I think he deserves. But like I said, why hasn't he been extended? I'm going to always ask this question of why, why hasn't the talk of him being extended been brought up? Because the reason that I ask is because, like I said, guys, we can't trust this organization to do the right thing. We cannot trust this organization to do the right thing. And while I totally understand, while I totally understand, you know, us having more cap relief after the June, after the post June one cuts, and then you're looking at a guy like Jonathan Allen who didn't sign his deal until hours before the first day of training camp. While so while there's still hope, I'm not saying that this is a dire situation at all, but it is a situation that should be talked about. It is a situation that has been talked about, and there's reasons why, guys. We aren't just pulling this stuff from our ass. There's reasons why. He hasn't been extended, right? There's talks. Of, there hasn't been really promising talks about him being extended. And then just not even talking about from the front office standpoint. Let's talk about the player here. What have we done to show Terry McLaurin that he should be committed to us in, in the long term? What have we done? Nothing. I'm, I'm letting you know now. Nothing. Nothing. We have done nothing in his three years to show us that he should be committed to us the long for the long term. That he should be wasting his prime years with this organization. Now I'm not on the on the oh we don't deserve Terry or anything like that, but we haven't shown it. I do think we deserve him because we drafted him, we took a shot on him. There are people in that community that say, oh we don't deserve Terry. He should get out of here. I disagree with that. We were the ones that gave him the opportunity. But I will say, since giving him that opportunity, since drafting him, we haven't done nothing to solidify this relationship for a long term. We haven't. We haven't. This is a guy that showed you elite play from the jump. Elite play. Also to mention, episode 48 of the Bleed to BG podcast, we're going to call this Trading Terry. Short and simple. Trading Terry. Trading Terry. Because the fact that this is even a talking point not even saying that it's coming from me, but people are talking about it. It's ludicrous to me. And it's something that better not happen. But with this organization, you never know. You never really know. And that's why I can't I can't rule it out. I cannot rule it out. No matter how optimistic I try to be about this team, they always let me down. They always let me down. But you know who hasn't let me down? In about three years since his career started? Terry McLaurin. He's about the only player in this three-year span that has not let me down. The guy that you want to be the first franchise, Chase Young, psh, he let me down, what, one game into his second year. Terry McLaurin is a baller. He's a certified stud. He's a guy that has produced. He averages over 1,000 yards per season for his career. I think he has 3,090 yards for his career. So that's about 1,000 to 30 yards per season. And this is a guy that has played with bum-ass Dwayne Haskins, bum-ass Colt McCoy, bum-ass Case Keenum, pig leg Alex Smith. Like, need I keep going? Need I keep going? And, and this is why I say that we still haven't shown him. Because while I do think Carson Wentz is better than those guys that I just mentioned. Oh, I'm sorry, noodle arm ass Taylor Heineke. How could I forget about him? The guy that was serving up hospital balls that had my man Terry getting killed in the latter part of the season. How could I figure out about him? 
And while I do think that Carson Wentz is better than those guys, don't get me wrong. I told you guys that in the Commander Carson episode. If you haven't tuned into that, go check it out. But is this really a move that shows you like, yeah, Terry, like we're really committed to you, dude. Here's your franchise quarterback, Carson Wentz. Crickets. 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 That's what I'm hearing. That's what I'm hearing. And that's what is coming out of Ashburn regarding the Terry McLaurin extension. Crickets. Because if you're really trying to show me that you're committed to me, and I know we were sprint by every player. I know we were sprint by every player. I even mentioned that. But if you really want to show that you're committed to me, go ahead and draft a guy like Malik Willis, who, who people have talked about having generational talent. And that, and that may happen, but I doubt it. I doubt it. Now with fragile ego, fragile ego, he was an eagle, but fragile ego, Carson Wentz. He was nervous with, Jay, with Jalen Hurts behind him. And I think Malik Willis is a better draft prospect than Jalen Hurts. And I think he'll be drafted higher that comes with higher pedigree. He was nervous that Jalen, Jalen Hurts getting uh, drafted in the second round. So he can't mess up his psyche by going with a generational talent like that. But if you think that, that and if, I, I hope those guys at Ashburn, and I hope anybody in the Washington commander community, if you think Carson Wentz was the guy to make Terry McLaurin go run and sign that extension, <laughs> joke's on you. Joke's on you. April Fool's is in two days. This is ridiculous, man. And, and like I said, I'm still holding out hope because we do have a lot more cap relief after, you know, June 1st. But you shouldn't have put yourself in that position dealing with mid quarterbacks. I don't mind waiting for June 1st if we were getting a Russell Wilson. I know we were spurned. But this is what comes with the organization. I'm not even talking about an either or at this point. I'm talking about the reality of what we have to deal with year in and year out. So like, like I said, what have we really done to show Terry McLaurin that he should be t committed to us for a long term? Nothing. Nothing. And you know how you end up getting players like this to resign with you? You know how you end up getting your leg up that you don't have with, you know, competitive play or competitive roster or opportunity to win a Super Bowl, things like that. You know how you get your leg up? By overpaying. By overpaying. And that's something we may have to do. That's why I don't want to have these debates on the Washington Commander community about is Terry McLaurin elite. He's elite for this team. And has been elite for this team since his first snap in his first game in 2019 against the Philadelphia Eagles. Is Terry McLaurin elite? Are we really debating that? Are we really debating that after all the trash we done seen since Santana Moss and before? He's elite for us and has been elite for us. Year in and year out since he came. With shitty quarterback play after shitty quarterback play after shitty quarterback play. Is this really a question? That's why I got so irritated with the guys in the in, guys and gals in the Washington community. Community, You know, we're all inclusive over here in Bleeding BNG. The guys and the girls that was giving me the heat like this is my idea. I'm with y'all. I'm with y'all. How many of y'all got a Terry McLaurin jersey? I am looking for a player to invest in. If you guys are looking on this YouTube right now, I am getting my aesthetic straight. We're using the big wall now. We're using the big wall. I want a Terry McLaurin fat head on my wall right there. But I do not want to look stupid when that man is a, 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 a Cincinnati Bengal in two years. And I'll admit, I'll admit I'm a tad bit scorned. I'm a tad bit scorned dealing with the franchise tag situation that we just dealt with with Brandon Scherf and Colt McCoy. And, and the reason being so is because come next season or come whatever, whenever the franchise tag is allowed to be slapped onto a player. If Washington slaps that franchise tag on Terry McLaurin, he's as good as gone, guys. He's as good as gone. He's as good as gone. 
you might as well start writing your goodbyes as soon as he signs that franchise tag or agree. Because that money is beautiful, but the long-term commitment will never be there anymore. Unless we super break the bank and give him about, what, $35 million after those first two agreements? That's how, the, that's how the franchise tag works. That's why we were capped out with Brandon Scherf. We weren't giving him $20 million after giving him 18 Same with Kirk. We wasn't giving him $30 million after giving him, what, 24 for the last couple of years while he was here? So if it comes a time when Terry McLaurin has to sign a franchise tag, not has to, or agrees to that franchise tag, you might as well kiss him goodbye, guys. And it pains me to say that. It pains me to say that so much. But y'all know we were realists over here at Bleeding B&G. So as far as if I was working in the front office, what would I do with my guy Terry McLaurin? Like I said, at this point, guys, it ain't about debating if he's elite. He's the best for us. Been the best for us for a while. He's the guy that can break franchise records. He's the guy that's on part of break a franchise, break a lot of franchise records. Imagine if we give him adequate quarterback play, which I think Carson Wentz can provide. Nothing exceptional. Just give him adequate quarterback play. And not the shit he's been dealing with for three years. Not the shit that he's been dealing with for three years. And then it's like, no, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and play the game if I was in the front office. That's what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and play the game if I was in the front office, right? What would I do with Terry McClure? Starting tomorrow, as soon as this podcast ends, I'm sliding Terry McLaurin to offer for four years, $92 million, with an average of about $23 million per year. They'll rank him within the, you know, the top seven or eight wide receivers in the NFL. Not Devontae money, not Tyreek money, but damn close. And he's not giving you Tyreek or Devontae production, but it's damn close. Which shitty QB play? If he doesn't take that four year 92, I may be willing to go up to 96, maybe. Maybe get willing to go up to 96. Give him 24 per year, make him feel good. But if that's not the if, if, if he doesn't agree to sign with us at that point, then I know he's as good as gone. So I'm going to let him sign that franchise tag. And I'm going to look for some good trade value. I'm going to look for some good trade value. Because guess what? A wide receiver playing on the franchise tag is a dangerous thing. We just saw what happened with Chris Godwin in Tampa. That's a scary proposition. So if it comes down to him signing that franchise tag, I, I, I'd rather see him gone sooner than later. Give me some draft picks. Because at that point, he'll show you that he doesn't want to be here, which I think he does. Terry McLaurin has been nothing but a stand-up citizen. I think that he enjoys being in Washington. He's been an elite ball player, and he's been the best player on this offense for three years running. These are guys you extend as soon as the new league year starts. Why hasn't it happened yet? Why are we putting ourselves in a position where we have to wait for a post-June, June 1st cap relief? Why? Stop playing with your elite players. You ain't got many of them. You don't have many of them at all. Stop playing with your potential blue chip players. And then we're gonna get a, we're gonna have a conversation about if Terry McLaurin is elite. We're really gonna have a conversation about if Terry McLaurin elite. Go ask the corners he plays against. I ain't even gonna lie to you. I'm not taking anybody in the 2019 wide receiver class over Terry McLaurin, including Debo Samuel. That man's half running back. Great player. That ain't even the same. And guess what? Terry McLaurin has more career yards than A.J. Brown. And he has about 60 less than D.K. Metcalf. Maybe 100 less than D.K. Metcalf. A.J. Brown has been playing with goddamn Ryan Tannehill. And D.K. Metcalf has been playing with Russell Wilson. Terry McLaurin has been, was playing with a guy that was sitting on this goddamn futon 18 months ago. Doing calculus class and shit. Pay the man. 
Pay the man. Pay the man. And I'm going to just go off the top of the head of the, 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 the list of, rec of receivers that I would take over Terry McLaurin. Let's think about it. How many receivers would I take over Terry McLaurin right now? Devontae Adams, absolutely. Justin Jefferson. Jamar Chase. Tyreek Hill. Right now. Right now. Mm. I told you I ain't taking none of them 2019 guys over him. I'm not. DeAndre Hopkins. Even though that's getting a little... Mm. Mm. You can slide Keenan Allen in there. I think this is last year being being better. I definitely think this is his last year being better. Cooper Cup, absolutely. Stephon Diggs. So who is that? That's Devontae Adams, DeAndre Hopkins, Tyreek Hill, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, Cooper Cup, and Stephon Diggs. And Keenan Allen. Terry McLaurin is a top 10 to 12 receiver no matter how you want to debate it. No matter how you want to debate it. And guess what? Every person that I listed, every receiver that I listed, has a better quarterback situation than Terry McLaurin. Every single one. And guess what? They probably still do. Except maybe Tyreek Hill. But I'll take two over Carson Wentz. They still have better quarterback situations than Terry McLaurin. But this is a guy that you that you are playing around with. Now you know we love playing devil's advocate, and you know we love showing you our insightfulness and you know our you know we got we got football minds over here bleeding B and G. So let me go ahead and play devil's advocate. Some of the hesitancy, and I think some of us fail to realize is that Terry McLaurin is about to go into his age 27 season. And that's one of the reasons why I held off on giving him the fifth year. Like I told you, I'm looking at a four-year, $92 million contract, maybe 96 at the most. Because this is a guy who, during during week one of the season, he will be playing, he will be turning 27. So he's essentially playing his age 27 season. So we can look at that, and I know he was drafted in the third round, but I, I feel like I feel like we're kind of, and, and it's a lot of people in the Washington Commanders community, we're kind of hyping up the Terry McLaurin, you know, rise to stardom story. Guys, he was still drafted in the third round. We still we, we, we always expect third rounders to produce. Not as instant as Terry did, but eventually they, they, we eventually expect third round rookies to produce. That's why I've seen so many people giving Yami Brown a, a hard time, and rightfully so. We expect him to produce. I seen people acting like he was he was Vince whatever my my name is from Invincible, the undrafted story. Now that's not Terry McLaurin. He was drafted to be a gunner initially, but this is a guy that instantly was, when he was brought in the training camp gave you something you didn't have, downfield speed because we couldn't trust Pat Paul Richardson bum ass. We couldn't trust him at all. So I will say you know with him coming in as a twenty four year old rookie was you know instant you know. Contribution expected, maybe, maybe, especially on special teams getting his him or there on, on, on offense. But what this guy has turned into is a, a Swiss Army knife of a receiver that doesn't have many weaknesses. Like I told you, he showed his downfield potential in his first game, torching the Eagles for a 70 yard bomb. For a lot of the early part of the 2020 season, he led the NFL in rack. Now, because he has noodle arm Taylor Heineke, how soon people forget. I'm hearing people saying Terry needs to get better with his run after the catch. Like, they forgot that he was leading the league through the first eight weeks of 2020 season. We don't forget over here at Bleeding B&G. That's why you should trust us as your number one content help for everything Washington Commanders. Who else is giving you gems like that? Because what I'm hearing in the Washington Commanders community, is Terry can be a little better at Yak. It's hard to be better at Yak when you got to wait for a goddamn ball every time you get it. This is an elite route runner that does it with 4-3 speed. Ask Stephon Gilmore. I do need to see you get in the end zone a little bit more, Terry. This is a guy that has 16 touchdowns over the course of three years. A little over five for the average touchdowns per year. But that also has to do with a lot of quarterback play. 
the windows get tighter in the red zone. You have to be more accurate in the red zone. And we, Lord knows we haven't seen that in Terry McLaurin's three years here. So I'm going to end this podcast by letting you guys know, hell yes, Terry McLaurin is elite. And not only is he elite, he's been elite for us. And that's something that we haven't had in years. So you guys need to appreciate it. And I'm talking to not even the Washington Commander fans. I know you guys appreciate it. You guys up there in Ashburn, appreciate this man. Get a man the money he deserves. Because guess what? The NFL already been cheating him out of Pro Bowls and Top 100s. So let's show him. Let's show us that we appreciate him. And that'll do it for episode 48 of the Bleeding BNG podcast. Like I said at the beginning of this episode, if you're checking us out on YouTube, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're checking us out on audio only, we're available on all podcast platforms at this point. If specifically on Google, um, excuse me, specifically on Apple Play and Spotify, please leave a rating. Please leave a review. Let's finesse these algorithms so that when you're looking for anything Washington Commanders, Bleeding BNG is your number one content hub. For everything Washington Commanders, be sure to follow us on our Instagram and our Twitter pages. Our Instagram handle is at BleedingBNG. That's B-L-E-E-D-I-N-G-B-N-G. Our Twitter handle is at BleedingBNG, spelled a tad bit different. That one is B-L-E-E-D-I-N-B-N-G. Only one G included in our Twitter handle. Be sure to check us out. We're treating all of April like draft month. So this Washington Commanders talk... But we're going to be talking about the draft in regards to the Washington Commanders because that's the only team we care about in the NFL. So, hey, any any wide receivers we might be pairing up with Terry McLaurin at 11? Make sure you're tuning into the Bleeding B&G podcast because we will be covering all things draft, especially, you know, those positions of need. So if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe, and I'll check in on you guys later. Peace. <laughs>